Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on KPAX, Montana's news leader. Good evening, I'm Dennis Bragg. And I'm Jill Valley. As we've reported over the past 24 hours, all signs are pointing to Bobby Houck returning to Montana as the head coach of Grizzly football. But the move is not official yet, and we're still waiting. Derek Berkeley has been tracking it all day and joins us with the latest. Yeah, we've been hearing for over a week that former Grizz head coach Bobby Houck was the clear favorite to return to his old position. And now multiple sources and reports all agree it is a done deal. However, the University of Montana has not made an official announcement. UM told us in a statement this afternoon, quote, no final decision has been made. We will make an announcement as soon as we are able, end quote. Some expect that announcement to come as soon as tomorrow. We have heard Houck has accepted an offer from UM, but the university will not comment on the process until it reaches a conclusion. After Montana Athletic Director Ken Haslam makes his choice, the school president and the commissioner for higher education must approve that decision, and Houck would need to sign the contract. Most likely we are somewhere in the middle of that process right now. This, the decision to bring Houck back has caused very passionate and different opinions from those in favor and against the move, and we'll take a look at both sides later in sports. Thanks, Derek. In the bitter room tonight, the new owner of the historic Fort Fordo and Ranch offers to work with Stevensville residents to resolve public access issues causing conflicts. But she also says solutions must be reasonable and respect private property. Miley Yaris, a successful Las Vegas businesswoman, was introduced at a Stevensville press conference this morning as the new owner of the 167-acre ranch. Uh, I'm sorry, 167-year-old ranch. That ranch surrounds the historic Fort Owen site, the first permanent white settlement in Montana territory. But the ranch's relationship with Steve I has been rocky of late, with the present owners shutting down informal public access on the Bitterroot River when they got tired of uncontrolled partying and other problems. Yaris wants to work with locals and state agencies, but also says she's a strong advocate of private property rights. I'm more than willing to be a good neighbor to the Stevensville community, but the healthiest neighborhoods have streets that run both directions, not one-way streets that lead to a dead end. Yaris plans to keep the property as a working cattle ranch when she takes over the property on January 1st. A group just forming to support and improve historic Fort Owen is very excited about having a new owner to work with. Those observations came after the friends of Fort Owen had a chance to meet Yaris at that press conference today. What she said today is really encouraging that I think we, are, we can work together we're very sensitive to the issues that having a state park creates for a private property owner, uh, but I know that we can uh, work together to solve those issues to the benefit of everyone involved. The Friends Group is still in the early stages of formation with an eye towards securing partnerships and dedicated state funding to make sure the Fort Owen site, structures and artifacts are well preserved. Specifically, they'd like to see John Owen's original settlement managed as a larger Class 1 state park with better parking and facilities that fit with the working ranch property. And that dialogue was already starting with Yaris after the press conference today. Myra said some really uh, nice things about being uh, sort of the inheritor of that 167 year history and she's appreciative of what that means and so I know when she said that everybody was really excited because it is an extremely important piece of property to, to uh, not only her livelihood uh, but also the community. If you'd like more information about the Friends of Fort Owen, you can call Gorski at 552-2072 or Ruth Baker at 550-3672. You know, we don't talk about uh, November going in like a lion and out, like, you know, all that stuff, but it sure was gone out like a lamb. It's been really interesting. Real quiet week, but a weather shift coming. Here's Chief Meteorologist Sarah Yos with a look at the first forecast. Aaron? Yeah, the calendar tomorrow says December, and a lot of us kind of wondering, where is the snow? We might get a little bit of it as we head into this weekend. Some folks in the flat Head saw a little bit tonight, uh, but we do have a larger scale system set to move in. It's not going to be a huge one this weekend, but maybe enough for us. Hamilton earlier today showing you those bare grounds. This is our first security bank eye cam. Uh, you can see a little bit of scattered light snow, mainly impacting northwest Montana. We're going to hold on to this sort of theme here overnight tonight into tomorrow morning. This quick disturbance is going to be just that very quick, very weak. However, that next one set to move in this weekend might have a little more oomph. I've got more details coming up in your forecast. Skiers and snowboarders across the Flathead Valley are starting to hike into the backcountry to find their powder. Although backcountry activities are fun, they also come with their fair share of dangers. 
if you're not prepared. The Flathead Avalanche Center is doing all it can to keep the backcountry enthusiasts safe this winter. Tonight at the Rocky Mountain Outfitter in Kalispell, the Avalanche Center gave one of its four scheduled avalanche safety courses. The hour-long class stressed how important it is to be prepared before you head out there and how to check if conditions are safe once you are there. Zachary Miller, who's a volunteer for Friends of the Flathead Avalanche Center, says the safest approach is to know before you go and have the right tools. You got to get gear, you got to get educated, you got to get the forecast, you got to get out there and be looking around, and then last but not least, you got to stay out of harm's way. And these all come together and really are what's vital in being safe out there in the backcountry. And we just don't want to have any more fatalities. We want to have our little community here be safe and having fun and skiing lots of powder. You can look at the Know Before You Go program yourself and other avalanche safety courses and the dates when you can attend on our website. We put a link up there for you. A grizzly bear was wounded over the weekend while a group was hunting near Big Fork. Dylan Tavish with FWP says a group of three hunters encountered a female grizz and two yearlings off Foothills Road in the Peters Ridge area. They were in heavy brush when the female grizz emerged about 60 yards away and charged. The two hunters yelled at the bear before firing their rifles at the animal. The bear was shot and backed off while the hunters retreated to their vehicle and left. FWP officers investigated. They determined the bear had been injured, but they couldn't find her. Tavish says that residents need to be aware that because we don't have any snow and it's not that cold, a lot of the bears are still searching for food. The weather conditions we've had have led to fewer bears going into their dens yet. They're still out and about and they're pretty active right now. And, and before they den for wintertime, uh, they're very hungry. So they're getting as much food sources as they can. And so uh, we really want to recommend residents remove food attractants from around their homes. He also reminds people that you should always carry the bear spray so you can scare the bear off rather than shooting the animal and possibly killing it. Open burning season in Flathead in northern Lake County is officially ended today. The Montana DNRC was reminding residents no debris burning will be allowed from December 1st through the end of February due to air quality concerns. During the winter, spring open burning season will start in March. Officials also say while the burn season is closed, there are other ways you can prepare for wildfire season. You can do that any time of the year, like creating a wildfire action plan for your family. Officials are set to unveil their findings from that assessment of the Lake County Jail and Courthouse. The National Institute of Corrections had been in Polson the last couple of days conducting that assessment. The work included interviews and a physical inspection of the aging jail along with reviewing procedures and policies. Lake County Sheriff Don Bell asked for the study last spring. It was done free of charge. Now that the assessment is complete, the team will present those findings to local officials and the public during a town hall meeting from 8 until noon tomorrow at the Lake County Courthouse in the third floor conference room. One whitefish group is turning its attention of sexual misconduct into an effort to raise awareness about the problem. Seroptimus International of Whitefish chose to focus on the Me Too hashtag that's flooded the internet with stories of sexual harassment and assault in the workplace. The organization set up cutouts of women around town with buttons that say Me Too on them. The buttons are available for people to take and wear to show that they have been a victim of sexual assault or harassment. Place the shame on women so it's the things that they hold in themselves and they just are told to be well thankful that that harassment didn't lead to something more violent and I think it's time that we change that storyline and put the shame where it belongs which is on the harasser and not on the harassed. You can see those figures around Whitefish. The organization is encouraging people to grab one of those buttons and tell your story. KPAX is proud to partner with First Security Bank and Glacier Banks for our annual holiday food drive that is now underway. We're hoping you'll drop off your non-perishable food donation at any First Security Bank location in Missoula or Glacier Banks in Northwest Montana. All your food donations stay right here in Western Montana. Every year we manage to collect more food and donations and it really helps our local neighborhood sure does up next Aaron is back with a potentially snowy forecast to close out the week and later the debate over tax reform continues in Washington as senators burn the midnight oil trying to pass this bill we'll have an update on what's going on still ahead on KPEX